Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Callahan, or as you probably know me best by my in-game call sign, Zoom. Today's announcements are pre-recorded to offer you the most curated information possible so that it is easily consumed and shared, as it is quite significant. I'd like to share a few words before diving into the presentation, so please bear with me for a few moments. Today officially marks 20 years of World War II Online. Congratulations, everyone. And as we celebrate this monumental achievement together, I'd like to take a moment to pay homage to those who paved the way to make this possible. It all started back in 1999, where the original Rats went to start a new company and met at a gazebo in Grapevine, Texas. Boldly marching together, they were able to bring the game alive at against all odds, making history in the process. So thank you for your extraordinary contributions and not listening to the guys who said it was impossible to make a game that many of us dreamed about come to life. I'd also like to recognize and sincerely thank the thousands of fans who over the years have been a truly loyal community. If it wasn't for you, we would not be here today. You are the real heroes for continuing to believe in the game, our team, and each other. I must also recognize the folks at CRS 2.0 who have since 2012 have not only saved the game and company from what was a catastrophic blow, but once again, in good CRS tradition, fought against all odds to stabilize and regain the ability to innovate by adding hundreds of new features and fixes to the game. A job well done to all rats for making these things possible. All of this goes to show that when the rats and the community are joined in a common cause and stick to it, we are unbeatable. It's not always easy. Sometimes visible progress is slow or routine gameplay frustrations arise. But this is a moment much bigger than routine. This is 20 years of memories, friendships, and our online community, which really is more like a family. So while I salute everyone for the job well done to date, I would also like to encourage you all to carry on the mission. Because as we start to dive into today's announcements, you will realize that our next 20 years of World War II Online is in our hands, and the decisions we make matter. Not just at CRS, but your decision to carry on when the going gets tough. This is the core test of our perpetuity, and it's something we always own together. I am confident that today's announcements will be some of the most significant you have seen in a long time, and it will showcase the possibilities of what can and what will be if we do this as one. Without further ado, let's get to the announcements. Today we will be covering four primary topics, ranging from integrated voice communications coming to World War II Online, our transition from early access to full release on Steam, We'll be talking about subscriptions and pricing, and we'll be talking about our intentions to move technology forward. We are approaching initial test phases of integrated voice communications after years of discussing bringing voice communications into World War II Online. IVC, short for Integrated Voice Communications, represents a total voice comm solution within World War II Online, so users can communicate directly with each other in an all-inclusive manner, not relying on any third-party program. Players will be able to communicate in two primary ways. The first being proximity chat, utilizing 3D positional audio. Players within the game will be able to talk to each other within about 20 meters of any friendly unit, regardless of their vehicle or infantry type. Mission radio is the second type. This enables end users to talk to anyone on their current mission channel regardless of range. This was done to keep things simple and allow for pilots, for example, to talk with one another or sailors who are far apart to speak to each other. And of course, this includes the army branch in any vehicle type. As long as you are on the same mission, you can talk to anyone else on that mission as well. Here's a current work in progress photo of us adding integrated voice communications to the heads up display. Notice the window on the left. As users speak near you, their name will show up in that box, and when they're done speaking, it will leave that box. That's an indicator to show you who in the area is speaking, or if in fact you're in an airplane and somebody's speaking to you through their mission radio, it will show up in that box as well. But when you're standing next to somebody, focus on the person in the center of the screen, their name above their head, and far to the right you will see a microphone indicator. As somebody is speaking next to you, you'll be able to quickly ascertain who that person is. 
Integrated voice communications is a huge breakthrough for World War II Online because voice communications is the number one way to enjoy the game the most. But it is also a massive retention tool for new users joining the game. Without it, most of them are lost. Most first-person shooter gamers have an expectation that this is just there and part of their experience. We fully believe that veterans and new players alike will experience greater connectivity to one another as well. Then gameplay experiences, by comparison, will be dramatically improved. Discord is not going away. It will also continue to be there for any custom squad needs and act as a hub of communication, much like it does today. This is still a great tool for us to keep people connected to one another and serves many purposes beyond just voice comms. During early access, we have learned a lot. Introduced DLCs for the first time ever, fixed a lot of bugs, and added new features. Got our website and training materials in order, and we've been working to get our subscription offerings right as well. All in all, this has been a very productive and valuable time. And upon the completion of integrated voice communications, World War II Online will be prepared to do a full release on Steam, taking us out of the early access phase, which we have been in for a while. Once we transition into full release, we anticipate another large wave or infusion of players joining the game. We can't be sure for certain what that will look like, but we are entirely more prepared and polished compared to our initial early access release. We are hoping to go to a full release before the end of this year, but it may lead into the early part of next year if required. There really is no rush or pressure. We just want to give our developers the right time and make this move. Squads should be preparing accordingly for an increase of players to the game. We provided some unique subscriptions to provide more accessible price points while maintaining value for users interested in a specific subset of vehicle classes. However, after some serious consideration and reviewing the results, we think we can do a better job. Here are the plans that will be discontinued, meaning no longer available by July 1st, 2021. The Starter Subscription, All Infantry Subscription, All Air Forces Subscription, and All Ground Forces Subscription. All of these plans, just mentioned, will then be converted into a $9.99 per month premium subscription plan. Our public offerings will then look like this. A 30-day free trial when signing up to the game, a perpetual free play model like we have now, a $9.99 per month premium subscription plan, and we will continue to have our Hero Builder plans with one special note to make. All users who are currently paying $17.99 per month will be transitioned to a one-time Hero Builder plan. You'll receive all features and capabilities of the Hero Plan without having to pay additional, and in fact, by comparison to the regular rate, you'll be spending $12 less per month. By doing this, we will continue to honor the agreed upon rate while unlocking quite a bit more access and recognition in and out of the game. It also includes the new infantry units, only accessible by builders. This is a key component to making the rest of this subscription consolidation plan possible. So by now, you might be wondering, why are we doing this? We're operating a massively multiplayer game, and to encourage growth, we need to make the game more accessible to more people, especially in times like these. We also aim to simplify our offer lineup so that it's easier to understand and customer happiness can be improved. We're putting our faith in you, the player base, to support us all the way and to remove any reason why not to subscribe whether you are brand new to the game or are a returning member. We should note that this is a bit of a risk for us to take. We really need you guys to hold on to the plans that you have and realize that we're trying to build the base of the game so that we can get it more populated. If there's a massive shift in downgrading plans, we will have to abandon this initiative entirely and return to where we have been for some time. So we're putting our best foot forward for you and being completely transparent now. Thanks for holding the line. What the future of World War II Online looks like, especially as we enter our 20th year of operation. In this segment, we're going to evaluate what the community has said and what our plans for taking technology forward looks like. To start, I want to share with you the results of a 2019 survey which had over 700 respondents. The first question we asked was, regarding our game engine, select one path that you think is the best path forward. We told you up front that we could only really do one option well, and to make your preference known. 
The first option was to continue developing our current engine and advance its technologies from within. Maintain the current production workflow, add in some special features, which, since we have done the survey, we have already added things in like 136, hybrid supply, 64-bit, and soon-to-be integrated voice communications. The second question was about going on to a new game engine, like the Unreal Engine, and realizing that there's some risk, uncertainty, and it will take several years to accomplish. From this, the community made their position clear, with 70% of the respondents focusing on the new game engine option, with the remaining 30% suggesting we maintain what we have and build from within. The second question we asked was, do you believe that CRS, and therefore World War II Online, has to do something significant to stay relevant in today's market? 87% of you said yes. As for the community's request, we have taken some initial steps to understand the probability of getting us onto the Unreal Engine, and right now there are two primary things our team is focused on. One, we need to maintain the scale of World War II Online that is inherent in what the product is, and enables the combined arms gameplay we all seek and desire. So we are looking to replicate our dynamic terrain loading mechanism within the Unreal Engine as a critical first objective. And while that may not be possible, we believe after enough evaluation it is theoretically possible. Along with the announcement of Unreal Engine 5, this does help. But it's also about bringing over our existing terrain as it is now, and all of those positions and data, it's quite a bit involved. It's not so simple. And the second thing is we're trying to create a conversion tool, or process, that takes our existing vehicles and converts them into working file sets over on the Unreal Engine with all of their hierarchy and associated data to plug into the Unreal Engine. No conversion tool of this nature exists on the market. Believe us, we've looked around quite extensively. So it's something we're going to have to create in-house, which we're working on right now. We should note that our intention to bring World War II Online into the Unreal Engine is in theory possible, but is going to take a lot of work. So we're seeking to do it. We have a plan in progress that we're working to validate right now, but there are significant obstacles in the way that could make this not happen. So we cannot promise that porting is totally possible just yet. Our objective is to show you some progress and discuss what's next so that you guys can be involved in this process with us and increase the probability of success. So let's set some expectations clearly. CRS still has a mostly volunteer crew. And to achieve these objectives, we really do require some additional funding in staffing. It's one of the reasons why we're taking a step back and reevaluating our subscription plans so that, again, we can become more accessible. And for those of you who are here as veterans, might be more willing to step up to realize that you're not just working to keep the game online and that's it. We are genuinely trying to innovate and need your help to do so. Now, programming on World War II Online as we know it, what we're calling now 1.0, will slow down as we move over to the Unreal Engine. We only have a finite number of developers. This is just how it goes. We will continue to have our production team focused there, though, and minor fixes on World War II Online 1.0 will continue, including new vehicles and the things that are on our roadmap. Those will all get done. Successful porting onto the Unreal Engine is the definition of World War II Online 2.0. That's what this all means. Here are some of the key reasons we're looking at moving over to the Unreal Engine. First, state-of-the-art tools enable improved workflows. That means that our artists, for example, can get their work done substantially faster within the engine without having to go back and forth between the editor and the engine program. They can see their work in the engine and actually modify it within the engine without having to go back and forth. And you can apply that to almost any artist discipline, like 3D art, texturing, animation. It's all substantially better and faster. And there's professionals around the world who already know how to use it. So once we go out to place recruitment ads to bring people in, the timeline to actually teach them how to do this versus implementing things is substantially quicker. There's also students in colleges all across the world being trained in Unreal because it's one of the premier game engines out there. And CRS is seeking to develop games, not strictly just engine maintenance. There's going to be some work where we got to work on engines. That's fine. But right now, it's strictly engine maintenance. We're just trying to keep the lights on. And that's not good enough. We need to innovate. 
we can acquire and upgrade our new technology once the Unreal Engine rolls it out. Uh, Speed Tree is a great example. We were just looking at what it would take for us on 1.0 to upgrade our Speed Tree, and we'd have to purchase a multi thousand dollar uh, server development kit and spend many months and personnel trying to do that, and we would still reach our CPU limitations. Whereas we go to Unreal, and guess what? The latest version of Speed Tree is already accessible and ready to go. So it makes a pretty big difference, and that's just one example. There's several others. Uh, you'll see soon that uh, graphics will be greatly improved. Our demonstration is going to focus on that. There's also the possibility of deploying on other platforms. And then everything is really well documented. So bottom line is we can bring somebody in here. They can know how to operate in it. If they don't, they can search it. And World War II Online has had issues historically with effective documentation. We've been working on that. It's been getting better. But everything is really well documented and you can Google or research, you know, the wiki to figure out how to do certain functions. So here's our current objective. First is to make a demonstration of Denant. We want to showcase the options and show you from a physical perspective uh, what's possible. And we have a demo here for you today. We want to convert our assets over from our current engine to Unreal. We want to create a conversion tool that includes the hierarchy and data set of all of our existing vehicles so we don't have to rebuild them all over again. That's just not an option, but we can do it. We're, we're certain we can do this. We're going to implement a working dynamic terrain loading mechanism, which will include our data as well. And then we're going to export the World War II Online terrain and import that into the Unreal Engine. All these things act as deal breakers if they're not achieved. There are also several unlisted objectives as well, but we don't want to overload you today. But all of this goes to show you that this is a working plan that's a living and breathing thing. It will be more possible with increased resources and full-time development staff. So with that being said, let's go ahead and transition into the demo and look at the possibility of what World War II Online could look like in the Unreal Engine.
now that we have concluded the technical demonstration phase of the presentation, I'd like to show you guys a little bit of what we've been working on in terms of content and capabilities. Let's take a look. While that does conclude all of the materials that we have to show you for today, it really is the beginning of something great. The future is in our hands together now, and CRS is taking in your feedback and trying new things to build on our future. We're responding to the community's request. 87% say we need to do something bold, innovative, and significant to stay in the market. 87%, and probably more now, really. So we require 100% of your support, 100%. We'll provide ongoing updates of progress on both fronts, meaning from version one, as well as our intention to move into the Unreal Engine. How can you support game development? First things first, subscribe. Subscribe to the game at account.worldwar2online.com. Do that ASAP. If you're already subscribed or you're coming back and you want to do more, or maybe this is your first time, become a hero builder. That is the number one way to help out the team. To find out what that means and all the details, go to worldwar12.com slash hero. Spread the news. Inform your squad. Inform your friends. Inform your communities. Go on Facebook or whatever platform you're most connected with, people who like this sort of thing. Let them know. And then stick with us. It's going to be a long haul. There's no easy way around this. There's no shortcuts. It's the community and the rats working together. We're all in this together. Thanks for your tremendous support. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for their attendance today, celebrating the 20th anniversary of World War II Online. Not only is it an exciting time to just make it to this point, but now we're talking about our future in a way that all of you have been wanting for a long time. We know we've always wanted better graphics. We know we've wanted new capabilities. This is our time. This is our chance. This is our ability to rebuild anew. World War II Online 2.0 is in the balance. CRS is putting all the cards on the table for you to see now. And we're sorry we couldn't do this sooner. But we wanted to get as much of it right and save it for this monumental moment. The moment is here. How will you respond? What will you do? Every decision you make right now truly matters. If you really want 2.0, support us. That's what we need. Think of our subscriptions right now as like a Patreon, as a recurring Kickstarter. That's exactly what this is. But instead of having to give those other platforms a bunch of money, it all comes back in-house and allows me, as a guy running the project, to do bigger and better things and to get the people the game needs so please support us in that endeavor subscribe it's like a patreon subscribe thank you very much and congratulations everyone on this huge achievement that's all